All right, guys, welcome back to Past Money. Um, so I was just talking to Kirby, telling him that I hear. So I hear this from a couple of the old timers. I say old timers; they're really like in their forties. But you know, no shout out, shout out to Kirby. <laughs> but, but so, um, I hear this from some people that like had properties, rental properties, and such, um, back in the recession, and then you know they'll have like four, five, six, and then. They'll just tell me like, oh, yeah, you know, I was investing there in that time, but I don't do it anymore, or, you know, or whatever they're doing now. And they um, they're saying like they're, the reason is because the recession happened and they took all my properties. And then so I'll ask them like, well, so why did you lose your properties? And they'll just be like, oh, because it was a recession. And I'm like, no, no, no. Why did how did why did the bank tell you we have to take your property? And they were like, oh, well, because I couldn't afford the mortgages and then the tenants weren't paying their rent. And then you find out the truth and all that. But like they make it sound like it was just a recession. The recession just like took everyone's houses. But then until the great ghost, it was a great famine that just came and said, I want your house, your house, your house, your <laughs> house, your house. Just no reason. I just want. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. And and I had and it's funny, it's people that went through. I mean, literally went through that time. And I'm not even talking about investors. I'm just talking about individual homeowners. They don't understand why they lost the house or how they lost it. I mean, they blame everybody of why they lost the house. The simple, it's simple mathematics. It's either, let's just say, owner, somebody living in the house. It's either, one, you lost your job because a lot of people lost their job. You couldn't afford the mortgage. When you signed the contract for a house, it doesn't say I will pay the mortgage as long as I have a job. You saying me, as in Kirby, will pay you no matter what every month over a 360-month period. That's the same thing with the lease. And, and it's funny when uh, when property managers or people that rent tell me like, well, I lost my job. They should understand. No, the contract didn't say, hey, you have to pay this much in rent only if you keep your job. You said, I will pay you this every month until the lease is up with no contingency. That's it. I mean, of course, if they said, if that was in the contract, and while I keep a job, rents will be way more crazy higher. Because now you know, oh, this person, if they lose a job, they plan on defaulting. If they're going to plan on defaulting, then I need to make the extra money to pay for the term, the eviction, and all that other stuff. But I mean, like I said, I talked to, you know, people that bought houses, you know, close close people to me who bought houses and things like that during the financial crisis. I mean, well, not during, but they lost it during the financial crisis and they don't understand. They don't understand that they was on adjustable mortgage rate. They don't understand that when when uh, loan modifications came out, they thought it was helping people. Oh, oh it was helping me to to uh, better afford the house. They didn't know that they was on adjustable mortgages, that when interest rates rose, their mortgage was gonna rise. Um, but the people that did good deals, I mean, there were some people that did good deals and was on fixed 30 rate debt that still got hammered because again, a lot of people lost their jobs, the tenants didn't pay, they was not well capitalized and things like that. But for the owner, I, it came down to adjustable mortgage rates and uh, losing jobs. That's why. I mean, like I've talked uh, many times on this channel about how I got a heartbeat loan. I just had a heartbeat. I didn't have a job or nothing. They still gave me a loan. I mean, I was managing my way to get through it, but it wasn't, it was hard. It was hard. I mean, I spent all my pennies, nickels, and dimes just trying to afford that mortgage. And then so that's the real reason why they lost it. I mean, like like I said, you know, we always ask who, what, when, why, and why. You had to ask why a couple of times. Okay, they said the recession, but why did they take your house because it was a recession? Oh, because the tenants didn't pay. I wasn't well capitalized enough to pay for, you know, the mortgages. That's the reason why it gets taken. And then to catapult that to the future, which is now, the problem I see with that is, most people, let's say 90 percent, well, let's go 90 percent. 90 percent of people on fixed rate debt right now, fixed rate mortgage right now. 
So the mortgage rate is not killing them. Unemployment is at all time all time lows. So and if you don't know, in America, six percent unemployment is considered full unemployment. We had three point six percent unemployment. So we're well. So we don't have a problem with the employment uh, arena here in the United States. The problem I do see is even that you're on fixed rate mortgages, the escrow payment is getting insane. I'll just stick to Florida, but when your insurance is doubling, tripling every year, that mortgage payment goes higher. When property taxes are going up astronomical rates every year, i.e. Texas, good thing they passed that law over there. Uh, shout out to the governor and the people in Texas for passing that law to give them some relief on uh, property taxes. But we ain't getting a relief from here in Florida. When that's going up, that mortgage payment goes up. And we just did on the previous video saying $50,000, $60,000, especially with mortgage rates today. If somebody got a house and then those escrow payments are keep going up, it's jumping into the little money that they had left. And then they're going to be in the same situation. Like Florida right now, we have a homeowner's insurance crisis. So with the insurance rates going to keep rising, keep rising, then hurricanes are going to keep coming. And interest and mortgage, I mean, excuse me, insurance rates are going to keep going up. Then mortgage payments going to uh, reach a, a element where people are not going to be able to afford to pay them, and that's that's the dilemma. And that's that's what it always happens. It comes down to math. People want to put the emotional side in it. People want to blame the banks. The banks gave you a fixed rate. It's not the banks. Right now, it's going to be escrow. It's going to be property taxes and insurance. It's going to be, it's going to be, and the financial crisis is going to be, hey, they, they gave us loans, but they shouldn't, have, they shouldn't have gave us the loan. That's what, that was a big thing in the financial crisis. They shouldn't have gave us the loan. They just doing their job. Their job is to make money off of you for borrowing money. It's up to you to know what you can handle and what you can't handle. And in the financial crisis, a lot of people, including myself, acquired properties that they was not financially ready to acquire. And that's why they got put in that situation. And I don't care if they homeowner, owner, owner or an investor. Because I know many investors that lost properties back then also. Right. Yeah, it's just something funny I had heard because it it kind of seems like I mean, I'm, I'm trying to remember the recession. I was like 10 years old. But um, <laughs> but it kind of—I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Was it similar to like what we saw in 2021? The market going up, everything going up, everyone's making money, everything seems good, and then we have a pullback, and now interest rates are getting higher. People are—we're now starting to see people not being able to afford homes. Uh, the stock market's pulling back and stuff like that. So it's like when I talk to these people like some of them you know to have five six properties it's like you would expect that person to know what they're doing and then they just lose it all and then you know it's like how do you go about losing it and like these people were like told to believe like oh it was just a crisis like you know it's just what happened the banks took all the houses and it's like oh okay. and then you find out like oh okay you bought at the top of the market oh you were buying in miami at the top of the market Oh, you didn't have enough cash flow. Some of the properties were break even. Okay, like, and then you find out the real reasons why they lost their properties. Well, this is another element you' not thinking about. But how the heck did they acquire five properties in a year? I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah. Because yeah. without, without, I mean, add on the fact that they were just giving heartbeat loans. Like now. I mean, you're going through the process now. You buy a rental property, you got to put 20 to 25% down, right? right? Back then, 0% down. So people was cash flow, cash flow neutral or cash flow negative from the jump. From the jump. And the interest rates was around five, you know, five, six percent then. It was around five or six percent then, but they didn't have to put no money down. So this whole putting, you know, 25% down and all that, that's a result of the financial crisis. Before that, all those years, like, you know, you hear they talk about Donald Trump. He probably put 
you know, a hundred dollars into a hundred million dollar project. Yeah, because it was you could do it then. You know, but you know, he operated at a, a different level, but that's what could be done. You know, all this money down now to have equity in the properties, that's because of the result of the financial crisis. So many people was getting homes. I mean, it was literally people that was at, you know, McDonald's, you know, with three, four, and five houses. Like, it, watch the movie The Big Short. People just, people with bad credit was getting housed. My credit wasn't the best at the time when I got my loan. But I just said, oh, VA loan. And it was like, all right, you good. No check for income, no check for nothing. Yep, you good. Go ahead, play up. Take it. And then, like I said, uh, and then, of course, and then, and that's why I'm a big proponent on escrow, understanding escrow, because like I said, I was paying the 900s when I first bought the house. Three years later, I'm paying 1400 and that's just property taxes and insurance going up. I was on a fixed rate. I was on a fixed rate uh, mortgage. So when I see escrow payments going up, I know the result of it because I lived it. So that's why I said I'm pivoting out of Florida as far as the rental property space because I saw the escrow payments going up. You know, I'm seeing my insurance rates on some of the properties I have in Florida going, I mean, my, yeah, my insurance, my insurance rates going up 125, 150, 175% in one year, not over time, in one year. So that makes the payments higher. And then the payments go higher. And then everybody want to know, why do you have to raise the rent on tenants? Because the cost to own this property has went up. And that's another reason why people lose their properties and they, they don't raise the rent on tenants either. Most mom and pop landlords, they rarely raise the rent on tenants. You know, they go three, four, and five years, but their costs keep going up, but they don't raise the rent on tenants. So the mom and pop investor, let's so let's say they started off like this. This was their profit. This was the their mortgage obligation with all the stuff. And then this mortgage obligation and maintenance and stuff kept creeping up, but they never raised the rent. Then they don't raise the rent till it gets here. But then they got to raise the rent to get that gap back that they had before. But then it's a too drastic a raise, and now they got to turn over property. Then there's more cost, more cost, more cost. And then they get behind themselves, and then next thing you know, they're screwed. Yeah. And that's and that's really how it all came down crumbling. And it will I think it in Florida, I think it will I think it will happen again. Not it I don't think financial crisis crumbling, but I think escrow will put a big damper on the housing market in Florida as a whole, especially in the metropolitan areas. Like where you live, Alex. What? You live in a bigger area than me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I live in a bigger area, but I mean, I showed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Lakeland, think people where yeah, I live Lakeland. are, especially the people from where I'm, where I live, they're not making income like that. We're seeing a lot of people move to Lakeland with that already have that income in place. So, all right. but, yeah. but with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.